Hey, Nikki. Hey, Selena. And hello, everyone. And welcome to Sweet Tea and TV. Hey, y'all. The podcast where the minute we hit record, someone outside of my neighborhood decides it's time to blow leaves. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. It's spring. There are no leaves. And yet, there's a machine out there going. To be fair, we hadn't pushed the button yet. My finger was hovering on the button. So how could they have known, really? Close enough. (laughs) Uh, That's how tuned in with your neighbors you are. I was thinking it was more like you bring your luck together (laughs) with my luck, start a podcast, and just we just sit back and watch the fireworks happen, y'all. Yeah, what what could happen? The fire, something. That's right. Everything could happen. Anything could happen. (laughs) Anyways, well, it's been a while uh, since we've been here together again. I know I say it all the time. You all don't know, but I fill it in the room. It has to be addressed. Um, and, uh, actually we haven't really been together since the coronation. That's true. Of the King, King Charles feels weird still. I don't think very that, strange. There's like something else in there for his official title. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The third, maybe it doesn't matter. That sounds right. I probably should be more helpful on that front. If I'm going to do things like watch the coronation. Well, you know, like I think as I was putting this together, I was like, let me look this up. And I was like, it doesn't matter. King Which Charles the Third. Oh, look You're at that. Right. See, I just knew. Just right off the top of your head, you're the biggest Charles fan. Just also, I just yeah, I just looked at the tattoo on my arm and I was like, <laughs> Charles, right, right, right. Um, but I thought like you know we did drop some things on social media and um, I didn't want to go and like just completely ignore the fact that like this is like a uh, much like still magnolias. It's one of the tent poles of our friendship. You know, we met each other and we were like, you love royal stuff. For no reason? Me too. <laughs> you have absolutely no connection. Yeah. Zero connection. <laughs> uh, let's let's get in on that. We'll be let's at 5 a.m. every three to four years for something. It's just, ma- it's magical in a way, but also like, it just feels not real. And yeah. so to yeah, have- I'm like, it's not our country. It's just not, you doesn't know, affect us. I, <laughs> it's terrible. But I do want to be very clear because I feel like sometimes there's, I see like a little judgment in people's eyes, like if I ever say anything. And I'm like, it doesn't mean I'm a fan of colonialism. Yeah. I'm an American. Yeah. Uh, Hello. It's the pageantry. It's like there's so much, uh, you know, I was excited to see everybody walking in and just see what they're wearing. And there's always royal family drama. It's like a soap opera. And we don't get any of that. We get drama. We got drama on drama on drama, but we don't have a lot of pageantry. Yeah. Even our most like whatever events, like inauguration or whatever. Yeah. It's it's fine. Yeah. It's fine, but it's not like that. We don't have um, carriages that go back to William the Conqueror, you know? Like gold plated things and. Not that I'm a fan of gold plated things, but I like to to see them with like all. Also, Disney generation. True. Kids. We're all now, everyone. Everybody is. The whole world. But like Disney princess, like it all just feels very princessy. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that people know that uh, Nikki was very kind and she hosted the event. There were even formal invitations to me. We worked really, Carolina and I worked really hard on that. We designed it just for you. It was very <laughs> In a perfect sweet. world, we would have printed it and put it in your mailbox, but time was not on our side. I wasn't going to say it wasn't printed. <laughs> <laughs> printed, embossed, put in your mailbox. But yeah, I mean, or the fact that it was like Carolina that was involved, like, um, I told you when I got over there that I thought about that and just like I almost started tearing up because I was thinking like this is a memory that Carolina will have long past maybe I mean <laughs> maybe she won't remember but I think she will I like to believe that she will remember at a minimum she has the fascinator that you left her that's true it's yeah it's very much sitting in her room right now um, I, oh, I love that. <laughs> so, like, I uh, I did arrive with three fascinators, but I also arrived to a beautiful space that was decorated. There was even a signature cocktail involved. You guys were at 6 a.m., so there was no alcohol in that cocktail, which is good. Can you imagine? Yes, too early. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, but, you know, so we watched the coronation. That was, like, part of it. But it's really more than that. It's, like, it's just the time together. It's making a memory. Selena crying in the car on the way over at 6 a.m. And just, yeah, it might have been also that I was up at 6 a.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> um, it could again. have been 5 or 4, though, if we hadn't been reasonable people. That's true. And what, let's not pretend like we're not up at unreasonably early hours. On recording days. It's true. Uh, That all happens. But 
Anyways, I did feel bad because I do think we wore poor little Carolina out. Um, she was very tired when I left, and she still had to go was a play lot that... baseball and have a birthday celebration. Yeah, so that I was did big that day. to her, and I don't I feel You didn't do she that was to like, her. She was like, I'm over this. That was a decision that she made herself. She actually got up early and said she was ready to just come on ahead and come downstairs because she didn't want to be late to our party about watching the king. So she, that was, she made that decision. She might have regretted it. We might not see her at Will and Kate's coronation. She was she was very sweet. She was very sweet. Um, so and then like the menu, we well, we gotta let them know about that. Oh yeah, we'd have to remember what was on it. Don't worry, <laughs> you've got it. I went back and looked at the pictures. Okay, perfect. Because I was like, oh, I'm tired. I, it's been a minute. Um, we had assorted scones from Seven Sisters. Oh yeah, which. Nikki provided, and I think I have to say, and I feel confidently saying this, that like we, we, you and I cannot recommend highly enough. Oh yeah. So yeah. if you are in the Atlanta area, I love systems, those. Man. They're really good. We, you and I were having this conversation and I think I had a similar conversation with Kyle that scones can sometimes have a tendency to be a little dry and like crumbly. I don't think seven sisters are dry and crumbly. And those were packaged, I think, which is especially, yeah. Uh, yeah. like, uh, uh, telling yeah that they really they know what's up yeah they're they're good um i even uh somehow was able to remember some of the flavors okay we we had some sweet and savory which was nice uh mm-hmm. and we have fig and goat cheese oh yeah we did that one was super good i also like because it's like a little unique you know it was sweet and savory all at one time that versus one sure. the yeah. They're usually either really sweet or really savory. Yes. Yeah. There's also that lavender situation. I can't remember mm. if it was like lavender and honey, but it was definitely lavender and something. And yeah. basically, because I am basic, you can put lavender in anything. And I'm like, oh, what is lavender. It? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's poop, Selena. And I'm like, but there's lavender. But there's right? lavender. Yeah, it's great. Um, there was like cheese and chives. There was also a jalapeno one that was really good. The butter beer. Oh, that one was really good. That one was like butterscotchy, I think we decided. Yeah, that was good. Very good. My favorite one there is vanilla bean, and you've already heard that wasn't in our collection, which was disappointing to me, but the vanilla bean is really, really good. Yeah. Was there, there was a cinnamon sugar one too, That's right? right. There yeah. Was one. yeah. That's good too. I, I always lean toward the sweet ones. Yeah. So the savory ones, I'm like, oh, they're fine. They weren't as excited about King Charles because the royal wedding, do you remember there was a special one? It was no. like rose and champagne. You brought it. <gasps> I do remember this now. And it was, that was my introduction to Seven Sisters. We're now on a scone podcast, which yes. I could totally do, by the way. But That's interesting. That they w- didn't have a special one. Mm-hmm. Um, they could have mm-hmm. done quiche. Um, so there was also mini pancakes, fruit salad. You had a beautiful assortment of Fortnum's tea. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then including the Royal Blend, of course. Yes, the royal of course. event. And then uh, did you want to tell them about your signature cocktail? Do you remember you did a signature cocktail? I do. It was, um, I don't remember the name of it. I sent it to you later. But it was, it was apparently a King Charles, and I don't have any of my uh, devices to look it up. It's like a King Charles uh, favorite. And it was gin-based. It was gin and like a strawberry-infused um, mixer that I made. So I had to um, like... What do you call it when you like uh, let the strawberries sort of like simmer down and sort of Mm -hmm. with sugar and then refrigerated that for a couple of days and then mixed it with the gin. And then there was something on top. Champagne. Champagne. Yes. I did it all alcohol free though. So I did a gin, um, a gin alternative ritual. Yeah. Does um, zero proof alcohol like uh, imitations. And then I did a, uh, I don't know how they make champagne without alcohol but it was like an alcohol free champagne as opposed to like a grape sparkling grape juice yeah it's tough because i barely know how they make champagne oh yeah so um but i know for most of like the spirits what they do is they do like distill it with the, and then they right. use a process to draw they separate it, it out. out yeah so yeah. i'm wondering if it's something similar yeah but what i will say is so like i actually don't drink and so what i will say is like you kind of i'm i'm constantly on the search for a mocktail that has like a nice bite to it mm-hmm. and by it uh, being a gin based drink, it mm-hmm. had a little bite to it, which yeah. is nice because a lot of times people are like, Oh, a mocktail? Here's some pineapple juice. Yeah. And I'm like, Okay. No. Um, mm-hmm. Which, by the way, will make you feel hang- hungover. Oh, because of all the sugar. Uh huh. Yeah. If you like wind up being out and have like two or three mocktails just because like you're, it's, it's a part of the ritual of being right. out at night and right. then you're like, 
feeling like crap the next day, but you didn't get the fun part, you know? So. Yeah. I was telling you that I've started drinking this ritual stuff because I like the ritual of a fun drink. Like if we're having taco Tuesday, I love a margarita and I want a margarita, but I just have been feeling so bad after I drink alcohol lately. It just makes me feel blah and like I have no energy. And that day- It is a depressant. It's true. So they're set in the mix. That day of the coronation, I knew one, you don't drink. And two, we had a big day, but I still wanted to have something fun. So I found that mock, well, I found the actual recipe online and then I just replaced everything with alcohol free versions. I will say that I think I uh, named that drink. It really is like strawberry royal surprise yeah, or something. something like that and that is in our post if anyone's okay. interested so they can't they can find it and i think it That's was good. in better homes and gardens so it's not unfindable so don't you worry you can't and i can't remember that name um i also uh, brought a quiche i will say i could oh, not wrap my mind around the broad beans in a quiche even though i like broad beans we talked about this on a previous episode um so i did quiche lorraine it was my first quiche it was delicious it was Thanks. very good. Thank you. Um, and we'll eventually, when I get around to it, we'll drop something in social media about that. But I'll have you know, Kyle Mays was looking at quiches recently for an upcoming trip we're taking. He was looking at a menu, I think is what it was, and found a quiche. And he was like, oh, I like quiche. And I was hey. like, I think you might have turned him. Let me tell you something. That's the highest of all compliments. Because I've been hearing <laughs> about his diet for many years now. And there's a very specific... It's not like he doesn't eat anything. Yeah. It's not like he's like a chicken fingers guy he or something. He just has preferences. He, yeah. He's got like what he likes and what he doesn't. It reminds me of my friend Sarah. She... It's not she don't eat. Right. But if you're like trying to throw something weird at her or you, she's like mm, something mm, crazy mm. like a quiche <laughs> something crazy like a quiche um actually she, i think she hates eggs so she would definitely wouldn't enjoy that do you think we talked about this eggs are divisive and both my they kids are. didn't really care for the quiche so i had to tell you that i laughed very heartily on the way home at how very much a parent i am not because you all need to understand that when i got there i was very impressed with myself i said nikki i didn't put in the green onion <laughs> <laughs> because it's for children, too. <laughs> and I want to be inclusive. Which was and very you kind. you looked at me and you said, Selena, it is a quiche. And they are children. <laughs> they are not going to eat it. And I can promise you, they did not like it at all. But to be fair, there were sweet scones sitting right next to it. And then we also and pancake bites. tortured them relentlessly well, yeah. about quiche afterwards. If you're going to be weird about quiche, you deserve to get made fun right. of. Right. They're going to get one for some birthday in the future <laughs> of that. I assure you. Uh so the oh, last thing I want to say before we jump into the episode is I, you and I were having, and Kyle, we're having a really good time thinking about like, <laughs> coming back to this idea of like, we don't have anything good. Right. And here's why. Right. If this was in America, like, you know, each one of the six parts of the coronation will be sponsored, right? <laughs> just like the bowl games. <laughs> okay. Like, it's not just a bowl anymore. It's a Tostitos fun bowl or whatever. <laughs> Okay, so it's the, the Verizon bowl. wireless bowl. That's right. <laughs> so I actually came up with a list. Jump in as you want to. Okay. Um, and let me know if you have any good ideas. Um, but a sponsor for each one of our American coronation <laughs> events. So first up, you got the recognition. Okay? Sure. Brought to you by Verizon. <laughs> Can you hear me now? You know, recognition. I thought you were going to say Ruffles. Ruffles recognition. <laughs> Have your recognition and your ridges. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. You got to hop in because I, I like I was doing this through like bleary eyes at Verizon 6 a.m. some morning. Oh, gosh. Then the next one up is The Oath brought to you by Tax Slayer. We get your taxes right each time. Every time. That's our That's oath our to oath. you. <laughs> That's great. The Anointing brought to you by Head and Shoulders. So I thought for uh, the anointing, you could do like an olive oil brand. Yeah. Um, and for the oath, I feel that also could be a lawyer, like one of those, uh, what is he, the accident lawyer? Oh, God, yeah. Paul well, I'm thinking Ken I'll Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> the we oath. bring the hammer and the oath. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, the investiture is the next one, brought to you by J.P. Morgan Chase. <laughs> The enthronement if brought you, to you. If you don't say that toilet maker, I'm going to oh! cry. <laughs> oh, what, what is, is it the, to the crapper? Yeah. <laughs> brought to you by the crapper. 
<laughs> the crapper family of toilets. Okay, well, maybe this one will please you. Though. Okay. And I guess it would be, what's the one that's like really recognizable now? Toilets. Coles or something? Oh, Cole. Yeah. Cole or American Standard. Yeah. So doesn't have the same ring as the crapper. Options. It doesn't have, there's no, no one can beat the crapper. No one can beat the crapper not. family of toilets. So this is not as good as that, but I was thinking the enthrallment brought to you by Lazy Boy. <laughs> oh, I like that. So there's still I do like seated. that. Yeah. And you need a Lazy Boy to sit through that entire coronation. Yes. So. And then there's the homage. Homage? I don't know. I think they do say homage oh. and we say homage. Okay. I don't ever know because I can't. I would have said homage. Things. Homage, yes. Maybe but I don't know it. if that's the right word. No, I think you're right. And I just gave two incorrect pronunciations. <laughs> <laughs> that just means there's flexibility. The homage. Anyways, so, and that is brought to you by Ancestry.com. Oh, I thought. Because when I looked it up, it had very much to do with, like, the people around you. So, I thought it was tough. I thought that's you were going to say the Hellman's homage. <laughs> That sounds delicious. It sounds great. As a Mayo fan. Or we're in the South. If it was a Southern one. Yeah, Dukes. right. Dukes. Right. Oh, Dukes sure. Dukes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. So there you go, guys. That's if we great. had the coronation here. We had way too much fun imagining the coronation being sponsored. Well, well, but we didn't come up with any of those good ones. What we're trying to say is that if we brought it here to America, we could both really um, incentivize it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. cheapen it. And I really feel like this is our call to action for the president in case whoever the next president is wants to call on us to do the inauguration. I think there are also stages of the inauguration, and I would be happy to um, make money off of that. Absolutely. I'm American. Let's I'm monetize it's the American to, dream. Yeah, I'm Let's to monetize it. Anytime. I mean, except for here. I mean, we'd be happy to make money here. Would love it. Would love also, this is a good time to say we thank you, Patreons. Yes. And we yes. do love you. We think about you often. Often. With affection. Every time so, we Sometimes buy, it's, you're the only things we're getting up for. Every time we <laughs> upgrade an account, uh, like our headliner account, we thank the Patreons. Absolutely. Because they make that possible. Absolutely. 100%. So thank you. Thank you very much. And also thank you, JP Morgan Chase. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case that works out for us. Who knows? And <laughs> let's get into the uh, the Lipton Sweet Tea and TV episode for the week. <laughs> Hey, we can do it. I can I can make all kinds of things work. I do sometimes fantasize a little bit what our first sponsorship will be like. Is it illegal to... Yeah, probably. We probably can't make up a sponsor for every episode that's not truly sponsoring us. You know, Casey said we should just start doing that. What if we do that? It's so funny. He was like... And I was like, I don't think... And he was like, who's going to get mad that you're plugging it? And I was like, well, it's true. that's... Uh, Unless okay. they disagree with our content. like Absolutely. I was going to say a brand, but I'm not going to. Good job. Look at you. Good job. <laughs> I'm yes. adulting. Yes. We're high-fiving across the table. Don't ruin it before we have it. You know what I'm saying? Ruin no. it after we got it. After we got it. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So. Uh, Speaking of ruining things. <laughs> well done. Well done. I'm just going to knock the mic off the mic stand But now. that's if you think Julia ruined things. Or better, I think better she better. jazzed them up a little bit. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't say Julia ruined anything. Oh, fair enough. All right. So we are at Designing Women, Season 4, Episode 19. Uh, this episode is called Pain Grows Up. IMDb's description is, Julia learns that her son Pain is graduating early from college and getting married to his pregnant girlfriend the next day. At the wedding, Julia gets drunk, performs an outrageous rendition of Sweet Georgia Brown, and wakes up the next morning in the same room as Payne's 22-year-old roommate, Scott. This one aired February 19th, 1990. We're calling it Julia the Dangerous Woman. It was written by Pam Norris and directed by David Trainer. So let's jump into general reactions, stray observations. Yeah, I mean, all of my reactions are Julia-based, because the episode is, you know? Julia base. <laughs> Julia base. <laughs> Give me a little Julia base. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> um, so like I I don't know, I just really felt for her in this one. Okay. Uh she she finds out very unceremoniously that these big changes are happening to her baby. Um I think it's probably uh even more there's no first pancake in this situation. She doesn't get another pancake. Yeah. So, yeah, that's you true. Know, it's like me. I can tell you as an only child, there's a lot of pressure there. Not for pain, though. He's male. So, um, but like the way he tells her, like, I know it has to be phone because he's in another, he's, but like during the day. Yeah. It's not a during the work conversation. Day. Has yeah. he lost his and mind? And just on the fly. That's a choice, right? 
Uh, I also. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. So like I, I was trying to remember. Show, right. We yeah. need the ladies there. But let's just take it to reality for a minute. Yeah. That's a crappy thing to do to somebody. It took me a second to remember why she found out so last minute that he's graduating. So that's that was me processing. Oh, that's right. There was an explanation for that. It yeah. was early credits or something early of course <laughs> <laughs> truthfully he's like not graduating i don't know oh. then like okay i know it is a sitcom and it doesn't matter but like all of it just sounded kind of unrealistic to me so they're both getting out of college right now okay that's realistic that's not that part but that means they are entry level people mm-hmm. and they're gonna move to new york city mm-hmm. cool uh with an infant in tow Great. No problems. There are no trouble at all. No help there. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, 1990 called, and they're very excited and totally understanding regarding the recent employment of a pregnant woman. Oh. Like, so yeah. I just, there's like these things that were just creeping up for me, and I couldn't help if Julia's like, this is about to get really expensive. Oh. But there are other things I will have you know, that because on rewatch this morning, like, they stayed in the four seasons. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, they had like a beautiful wedding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, there's a, they're going on a honeymoon. Do you know how many adults I know, like legitimate adults who are like, we got to put off our honeymoon for a while because we just paid for a big old wedding? I think I had convinced myself that there's some money set aside for pain, like from his dad passing away, some money set aside for this like big major life event. I think it's definitely the case. He's not living the same life we did coming out of college. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, so, yeah, if I'm Julia, I'm thinking about how I'm about to get hit up for money. But I think that's fair and true to this show that he probably does have some kind of uh, trust so, yeah. from his dad. On the note about feeling for Julia in this episode, I feel like that's a good time for me to say my yeah. main general reaction is actually that uh, I thought this was an interesting approach to this storyline. So pain, getting be uh, I want to make sure I say this in a way that's like not offensive his girlfriend getting pregnant and then getting married really quickly incidentally we're going to talk about shotgun weddings with zero judgment and extra sugar this week um, but that's what this what's happening here is they're having a shotgun wedding it's interesting that they um, I guess Pam decided to focus on Julia's reaction to becoming a grandmother over any sort of like fear that Pain is throwing his life away right. or that he's wasting his beautiful future, which I think almost every other storyline would that. have looked at it that way. Yeah. It's like, oh, she would have tried to con- flown up there to try to convince him to not get married. Or there'd be like some kind of slut shaming. Exactly. Yeah. Good. And in this That's instance, great. she was just more focused on her, which is very on brand for her, more focused on her journey. But I liked it. Yeah. I liked looking at it that way instead of this like sad, shamey sort of thing. Well, I also think that the episode did a really good job of reminding her like if we're talking about her journey and how this is affecting her Mm -hmm. which i think it very much even though she keeps trying to focus on pain i think that's there yeah um but it's like reminding her over and over again you're old now yeah which i think is really tough for her hard for anybody well because we are in an increasingly obsessed youth culture um or youth obsessed culture rather and um and i i think it is all that lens is all the harder on women, mm-hmm. you know, women get, I mean, men get to be, uh, Oh, look at him with his dapper gray hair. And then it's like, Oh, look, she turned into an old hag. I'm right. not saying that's how it always plays out, but I do think it's, it's been very difficult. And you Hollywood has a long history story of that being the case where you would have someone who in one movie with a man played their daughter, mm-hmm. then their wife and then their mother. Right. But they get to stay the same age. Right. You know. And I think we talked about this with Dixie Carter, maybe between the first season and the second season, where she was already older than the other cast members. Yes. And so she maybe had a little work done so that she didn't look quite so old. So I don't... I, this is fresh off my brain, so I don't know any way to articulate this, except I wonder if this storyline parallels a little bit of Dixie Carter's experience or um, is sort of like something that maybe truly is the way she would have reacted to all of this because it does sound like maybe she feels some acute sense of pressure related to her age on this show. I, yeah, I think I, I mean, how could you not, or just like in general, I think 
whether it's on a show or in Hollywood, I like often think about the scrutiny that they receive. And it is like almost too much for my, if someone looks at me in the grocery store, I'm like, what are you looking at What do you want? What's wrong? Right. Have a booger? Yeah, exactly. Um, you see my cellulite? Uh, that's normal, <laughs> I'm not right? even wearing shorts. <laughs> Where are my pants? <laughs> um, oh God. But um, I think the real struggle here is she doesn't feel needed anymore. Yeah. I, resident mom, I don't need to be making that judgment call. But that was what I picked up on. I think she said that at one point. She got off the phone and was like, sure, you don't need me anymore. Or no, when he went into his room, that's what it was. When he went into his dorm room, she's like, sure, you don't need me anymore. I have no idea how I'm going to react when that day comes. I really don't know. But I think most moms go through some version of that as their kids grow up and out. Some moms really love it after a few days. <laughs> Other moms, I think, struggle with it more. I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I, well, right. We're all humans and all react differently in situations and not everyone is going to react the same way. But I think most of the moms I've known have at least had like a ping of like, oh. Um, well, yeah, you yeah. spend so long, 18 to 25 years, depending on what that lifespan or that like um, education span and things like that look like. 18 to 25 years is a long time. And then just have them leave. And it feels like it just keeps getting longer. And they just, get, yeah, it's true. They're on your insurance till 25, till they turn 26, actually. So that's a long time. So it's like a quarter of your life in a way. So it is, it's a chapter. And I think it's like every chapter in life you go through, I imagine, some emotional struggle. So I don't think too hard on that because I'll start crying. But okay, I'm well, sure. let's not do that then. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of moms do. Um, they do struggle with that. Yeah. Poor Julia. Did you have other general reactions? I think, you know what? They're under general reactions, but everything feels so stray. I thought That's the name of the game. Um, Charlie and resident non mom, maybe you can relate to this. Charlene's assumption about Suzanne wanting to have kids, I felt like was really relatable. And then, as was Suzanne's reaction. It's really funny that you say that because on rewatch, I was like, I wonder if Nikki's going to ask me how that <laughs> hit me. Because Suzanne's like, I'm sorry. Because she's I, like, what, what are you she, talking about? Charlene says, and you haven't even started yet. Right. <laughs> and, started what? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I think that reaction is about right. Maybe not that I assure you I would do it with no muss and no fuss, um, <laughs> which was funny. And I think true to Suzanne, for me, I'm like, I would do it with all the muss and the fuss. It would be very messy, quite terrible. I, I think. think Suzanne's also would be. Yeah. I think we'd all be on a very messy journey with Suzanne having a baby. Well, in that, I can really see, I see you, Suzanne. <laughs> I see you. Oh, God bless her. I just thought that was really funny. It was. Um, so did you have more generals? Just one. Is that we've talked before, and I think recently, but about feeling empathetically embarrassed for characters on TV and in movies. And I definitely had that, like baby carrying the watermelon and dirty dancing feeling with Julia in this one. Oh, when she was doing sweet Georgia Brown. Yeah. Kind of. Oh, I think that is so out of character for her. I think if it had been anyone else, I wouldn't have, but she is so always composed and, uh you know, and just, I mean, well, I mean, she does have her rants or whatever, but she's just very, we've talked a Even lot. Even in her rants, she's really articulate and in control. Yes. And this just seemed uh, very off base from that. <laughs> I did not think about it that way because I was so busy laughing at her. Oh, I She's mean, so extra. <laughs> she, yeah. She's just having the time of her life. She was having a really good time. Oh, man. Strays? Uh, so I have a guest star alert. Um, when they're in the hallway at the dorms and Julia says something about the car alarm under her breath, it turns out it's Payne's friend's car alarm. Mm -hmm. Well, that character is played by Larry Cox. Um, and he played a named character in friends, which feels like a really big deal. Um, his name was Arthur. He was in season six, episode 16. It was an alternate plot, an alternate reality plot line. Um, the one that could have been. Okay. And I should have written down more about yeah. that episode, sorry. But he he was an actual, like, character in Friends. Oh, well, that's interesting. I, the way you, st- I thought you were going to tell me the car alarm was Kit from oh. the show Knight Rider or something. <laughs> that is a, an, a reference I am unlikely to have uh, pulled out of my hat. Yeah, I, I don't even know how that came about. I'm way too young to know about Knight Rider. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I was trying to look up the plot of this episode real quick in case... Um, Oh, so it's where Rachel 
it, it, this, they're back in time. Rachel okay. comes into Central Perk to say that um, Barry, her ex fiance, and Mindy, her ex maid of honor, are getting divorced because Mindy caught him cheating on her. Yes, I think I recently saw this one. He's not Barry, is he? And the, no, no he he's, Arthur. he's Arthur. Yeah, <laughs> get it together, Selena. And so this is the one I saw this one recently too, where Phoebe is like a high powered yes. um, stockbroker. She's something. like having the heart attack. She's having wow. a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. But apparently Larry Cox, who's in this random episode of Designing Women, is in a random episode of Friends. And I just thought that was a big deal. If you get a named character on Friends, I think that's a big deal. I would be fine with getting a named character. It would be really weird if I got one now because, you know, show's off the air. But Well, yeah, that would be weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, Let's see. What other strays did you have? I also had a cut line. Um... After they're, So they're in the hotel room trying to figure out where Julia is. Charlene says, where could she be? Um, they cut out. Someone says, you thinking what I'm thinking? I think we're all thinking the same thing. She's been in an accident. Um, so the ladies were spiraling a little bit trying to figure out where Julia was. Okay. What strays did you have? I have Charlie mentioning all the names for grandmas. Just had me thinking about the really specific southern grandma names we have. She mentioned some of them. But like Mama, Mima, Mama. I called my grandma Nanny. Uh huh. Is that Southern? You I know, don't know why I called her that. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think she mentions either Nanny or Nana too. Um, Nana, yeah, she definitely did that one. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't know. Call my other grandma, Grandma. Yeah, so. I call Grandma and Grandma me. And so I don't even use the Southern names. So certainly there are those in my family and there are those in, in Casey's family. Mm-hmm. I like it in his, which is very Southern to me. There's like descriptors. So you know which mama it is. Is Uh-oh. it little mama? Is it big mama? I got to tell you, the second somebody called me big mama, we're going to have to talk. So my parents, uh, my stepdad is Paw Paw mm-hmm. because his dad was my Paw Paw. I feel like Paw Paw is pretty Southern one. Paw Paw's, yeah. And then, um, it's well, the double name. He, he's Paw Paw. I called my grandfather's Papa. <laughs> okay. Uh, my mom is big mama and they just call her big. And that was, she chose that one. Hey, if you choose she it, it's chose okay. I'm just saying if it's oh, delivered man. to you, yeah. you know, you better, you might want to think twice. Ask. I I like granny. I love granny. Uh, I like Nana. I have no fears at this moment about being a grandmother. I mean, I do because my daughter's seven and my son's five. But at some point in the future, I'm not afraid to be a grandparent. It seems really fun. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, I think she had it nailed. That's what Julia said. Yeah. I do want to be a grandma. I just, the only thing is, I like, or I want grandkids. I want grandkids. Yeah, but there's just one problem. You have to be a grandma. You have to be a grandma. Um, it's I, true. Yeah, actually, I mean, I'd be a grandparent. That sounds awesome. It's the parent that's struggling. It's the, the step in between that re- that's required yeah, to Yeah, where they just, like, they need a lot. That's true. But grandparents, I mean, you know, you're dealing with this today. Uh, they get treated like royalty. They do. With your parents. They get bedtime. They get midnight snacks is what they call it. That one has blown my mind. I'm like, what is a midnight snack? Nothing like, you got. And like, Big brings me Oreos in bed. And I was like, what? Who is this woman who raised me? That's right. Nothing you got. got. A midnight snack. That's right. Oh, my God. And that's why being a grandparent is fun. And then I just have to say that it is a very important relationship to me. I love both my grandmas. Oh, sure. Very, 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 very much. And so anytime grandmas come back up, I'm just like, oh. Because they're, they're special people. They really are. They're special people. Uh, my last stray is about Julia's song and dance routine. Mm-hmm. It has to be a nod to her burlesque in real life, um, which we learned oh about. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yeah, we learned about that during our Dixie Carter deep dive. Well, you and I were, like, punch drunk when we did that episode. <laughs> um <laughs> I can't You're remember. Welcome. I, I can't remember if I told you or not, but my friend was listening back. She was like, "That was hilarious. <laughs> you two sounded like maybe y'all had done a little something beforehand." And I was like, "We drank punch." Oh my god, that's crazy. Um, and I was like on empty stomachs. Yeah, that's so, true. Anyways, I I thought that um I thought that she was really good. Mm-hmm. Like I thought she did a really nice job. That's why I was surprised to hear that you had like a little bit of secondhand embarrassment. I think it was like. Yeah, but I was sitting there thinking, like, if my mom did this, oh, I'd be like, sit down. Pain was so cool with it all. Uh, I have thoughts about that. But okay. I did think that this was one of the more obvious dub segments 
Oh, We're getting into okay. the stray strays here. Okay. But I was like, oh, that's rough. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I have to rewatch it. I didn't notice that. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. This is what happens with the high def televisions. Yeah, that's true. We learned a long time ago that these scenes are her payment for any political rants. Oh, yeah. But I just have to say that I actually went and looked back. I don't see anything that is equitable to what we see here. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it was our birthday present or something. Yeah. <laughs> because she really hasn't ranted this season. And you, I don't remember the next few episodes. I have to rewatch those. I don't remember them. You don't think there's one coming up. Because, you know, there's this thing about this show where sometimes they film out of order of when they air. So is it possible <laughs> that they've mixed it a little bit? It just, the, it's funny. <laughs> It's funny that you say, what? <laughs> this um, is brand new information. I can't believe it. Um, it's funny that you say that because, well, look, at I'm thinking about the future episodes. I mean, they're just not really that. They're not like the that. the season isn't that political. Yeah, I guess that's true. There are important issues that are raised, but I don't know that I would say they're politically divisive, you know. Maybe it was her birthday. I mean, <laughs> now I have to look that up. <laughs> Let's uh, see. It, w- it won't matter. May, she's a May baby, May 25th. Oh, not the right side of May, but you can't be perfect, you know. No. Um, I feel comfortable saying that because <laughs> there are other people that you love. Other May birthdays. Or the early Mays. Yeah. I have one more stray I wanted to mention. Okay. Uh, the manners in this episode were really on point. So first we had Julia introducing Payne uh, to Scott and Scott to Payne uh, when they found her in the room. It was almost like it was on autopilot. Yep. I feel like that was her Southern showing through. Yeah. Uh, Charlene also said we can't leave while Payne and Sylvia are still here. It wouldn't be good manners. I um, noticed that at the morning. wedding. Mm-hmm. So I think that might mean it's time for Welcome to your manners moment with Mrs. Mays. And I really had all intentions of updating that to make it sound better. Uh, but I ran out of time. So you mean your voice? Yes. I kind of love it. <laughs> like the fact that it's muffled makes it better. It's like an, <laughs> like an, an like a local NPR station. <laughs> local, local. Uh, yeah, like hyper hyper like local. My I closet did, local. Yeah, I want to be very clear. Like local NPR, you do a great job. You're doing fantastic. The only amateurs around are Nikki and I. <laughs> But there's something about that. I like it. I think <laughs> okay. Should. Okay, good. Because I was going to say it would have to be like a season five gift to everybody for me to re-record that because there were steps and things and it was um, a lot. And I really like the music. It's I like, do. I like the music. Spot it's on. very yeah. lovely. Uh, so what I thought we would do is talk about some wedding etiquette because, I mean, we got a big wedding in this one. We can't did, not yeah. talk about etiquette. Right. Um, so... I mean, I think for us, and we were just talking about this with the coronation, like we don't have a lot of fancy events. We're not high society people. We don't have a lot of fancy events. So if you go to a wedding. Well, you and me. That, I'm sorry. That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh um, okay. I mean, Americans too, just generally, but I guess there are galas and things like that. Sure. But we just don't have a lot of that for mm-hmm. us. Weddings might be like the social event of the season for me. I don't know about, I can't, I guess I can't speak on your behalf. For me, they are. Well, except for the Met Gala, but yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, So, of course, with formality comes manners and etiquette. Um, So I thought maybe we should cover some of the basics of being a good guest at a wedding. Yeah. Let's let's make me feel bad about all the dumb things I've done in the past. Go on. I don't know. Because then I also found a couple tips that surprised me and surprised me in the sense of like, do we really have to tell people this stuff? Um, So this might make you feel like a great guest that you don't have to be told these things. Okay. Um, Like, don't show up drunk and show your tatas. That's not on my list, okay. but good Don't rule of thumb. That. Or do do that. You know what? It's not really my call to make. Good tip. How dare I say? Yeah. How are those again? T I P S. Okay. So here are five basic wedding guest rules. Okay. Number one, RSVP on time. This is important for the couple because they're making really big space and catering decisions. Do it on time, man. It is expensive. It's expensive, and you pay by the head, and you're paying regardless of whether they show up or not. I think that is a very important one, and I do not think by the way that you shared it that this is the one that surprised you. No. But I think people are terrible at RSVPing. Terrible. Like, you shouldn't have to track someone down. Mm -hmm. They just, like, don't come. And this, I will also put in a personal plug, that this is for weddings and also, like, anything you're invited to. Yes. 
RSVP. They need to know whether you're coming or not. I felt terrible. Carolina got invited to a birthday party recently and the invitation got lost in her backpack. And so I didn't know until like two days before or three days before the event that she had been invited. So I reached out to the mom and I was like, oh my gosh, I've missed your deadline for RSVPs. I'm so sorry. She was really gracious and of course was like, fine, please come. But I feel terrible. Like they're planning in this event, they're playing like pizza and cake and stuff. And they were probably going to have the same amount whether she came or not. But still, yeah, RSVP on time, people. On that note, abide by the plus one. So basically, if someone isn't addressed on the invitation, they should not be at the wedding. So if the invitation is addressed to you and a guest, you can bring a guest. But if it's addressed just to you, you're the only one invited. Don't be the person that brings an extra uninvited person. I think it's really awkward for everyone else. It's very unacceptable. I had one person who came to my wedding and I had invited her and her longtime boyfriend and her and her longtime boyfriend broke up. So his name was on the invitation and they had broken up. So she ended up bringing someone else entirely, Mm -hmm. which I guess is fine because technically she had a plus one because of the Mm ex-boyfriend. But this was like a rando that none of us knew. And there is nothing weirder than being at your wedding and looking out and being like the most magical day of my life. Who is that? Why am I giving him alcohol and food? Why is he here? Who is this person? I never saw him again. Oh, yeah, that does. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, The third one, pay attention to all the details the couple has provided, either on their website or with the invitation. The most annoying thing you can do is text a stressed bride three days before the wedding to ask whether or not there's a hotel block reserved for wedding guests. It's probably somewhere on a website. Or maybe with a bridesmaid. Now, are you pulling that out of thin air or is that also? So I found a list of um, best etiquette tips. And I actually don't have a personal one on this one. Um, But this is something people tend to do. They go to the bride. I I won't tell you on on the mic. (laughs) You have a story like this? I do because if the person ever hears, they'll know I'm talking about them and I can't. It is so, so crazy to me that these people, like the couple goes to all of these steps to like plan out everything and to make everything easily accessible to you. And then what you text them like two days before their wedding and ask them something. And I do think it's important though to say that like, if you haven't been through the experience, like you may not realize just how much, um, like the bride is juggling. I do mean the bride. Um, so I, I do think it's like, it, it, that does come with a little life experience. I definitely know that 19 year old me did not understand what was going on. So I yeah. do like, I want to give people some, a little bit of grace and wiggle room. But like, if you're a 45 year old who's like calling up the bride an hour before the wedding, you need to chill out. So I'm really glad you're saying that uh, because as I was writing some of these things down, I was feeling very judgy wudgy and I sound very judgy wudgy because I've been through it. And it's an etiquette. I'm 37. Segment. But I also, the part of the reason I'm bringing these up is because I do think there are some people who do not, whether culturally it's different in their culture, how weddings are handled or maybe just generationally, whatever. They don't know these things. So that's yeah. why we're sharing it. That's right. Um, the fourth one is following the dress code. Mm. I personally hate a dress code for a wedding. You know this about me. Uh, You're laughing. They're they're tough. They're really hard. Also, some of it is like, it doesn't, like business smart. What does that mean? What does it mean? What does mm-hmm. it mean? Yeah. And don't have a black tie wedding and have it at some random hotel that's not black tie. Yeah. That just annoys me. It's so extra. But... If a couple requests it and you say you're going to come to their wedding, then you owe it to them to follow the dress code. Um, and there are some perennial rules, whether there is a dress code or not. If they don't, if they don't specify a dress code, there are some rules. Don't wear white if you're not the bride. Just don't do it. It's just poor form. Mm-hmm. Uh, and don't wear provocative or flashy things. I don't get overly whatever about those things, but like there's just a time and a place for certain outfits. And like, just generally speaking, you should know what those times and so places no are. Yes. Tassels nope. Right now. And okay. you don't have to use your fingers to show me what those tassels would be. <laughs> you can stop right now. On my eyebrows? Oh. <laughs> and then uh, the fifth one that of just like tips, that, these are not TIPS. These are not the ones that necessarily surprised me, although this one kind of did. Uh, you should attend both the wedding and the reception. Uh, if you're a wedding guest, I didn't realize this was a question. Like I think of them as an all in one event. So I never would have thought of this as an etiquette rule to mention, but actually some people do mentally separate the two out and will only show up to one or the other. I think I would be more annoyed if someone only showed up to to the reception, reception, right? They skip, they skip the pain part. They skip the sitting in church or sitting in front of the minister part. We all need to ask ourselves why we have a pain part. 
for something. I love a a wedding. Personally, I love a wedding. I bet my husband would call the wedding ceremony kind of a little bit of a pain part. It's boring. It kind of depends. Yeah. Um, There's been a couple of weddings where it's Georgia. It's hot. Hot, yeah. Outside. Yeah. I'm melting. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that does make it tougher where yes. that kind of sticks in your brain. You I've know, been like to a your couple dress of those. is sticking to your butt, yeah. like more so than like, oh, the beauty of a ceremony, you know, I, I also like short and sweet. Yes. But hey, it's your wedding. You do, what you do you whatever you do. want. That's and right. I, I love a wedding. If I get invited to a wedding, I, if I say I can't come, it is truly a like huge favorite part of a wedding. Oh, the ceremony, uh, my favorite part of the ceremony mm. Ah, oh, there's there's still like the easy answer of like when everybody else is looking at the bride, I turn and look at the groom. I really do love to see his reaction um, to like whichever partner is standing up waiting. I like to see their reaction when the other one comes down because there's a little bit of a flashiness and a showmanship to it. But I also just really love listening to the vows. I love to see which direction people go. Are they going the traditional whatever vow? Are they writing their own? I've never heard anyone write their own vows. Kyle and I wrote our own. Did you really? Mm-hmm. I have a copy of mine. Uh, I mean, I have multiple copies, but he actually printed one out on like a, a piece of metal for me to hang on the wall. It hasn't been hung yet, but I have it. But yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so nice. You did, right? You'd be the ones. You know, I just couldn't bring myself to do something like just repeating something. I wanted it to mean something to us, something that we both wanted. So that's we did. Nice. It was nice. His, I, his were probably slightly better than mine, but it's because I also just like, claw for really sweet information so like when he was saying it I was like crying he didn't cry at all but I like the vows what about you what's your favorite part (sighs) yeah I don't I think it probably is the um like I don't know I don't want to put that much attention on a man (laughs) I actually think I like to see like how people made that part unique like what they did to make it stand out from other things. You mean the the ceremony itself? Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. for me, that's why mine I love the was, written vows. That's a good point because it's one of the. Few, it's not like you have that much to play with, right? Mm-hmm. But for me, it was, and I remember. Uh, it, I'm like, I don't think my mother in law will ever listen to this, but um, Cindy, if you do, like, I totally understand where you're coming from. But she was flabbergasted that I wanted to have snacks and drinks. At the ceremony. And she was like, you want someone like snacking down on something like that? Yes, I, was I like, do. Absolutely. I was like, I want them drunk. <laughs> and I want them having a good time. Everyone in the audience needs to be lubricated for me to walk down it, which it's, I just, that was a terrible word to use, but you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, um, like, that was very important to me. I want it because I have been to so many weddings too. And this is, it makes sense. It does. It's not normal, but like where I was just so thirsty or so hungry oh, yeah. and you're just like, wait, and I d- my my highest bar was to make sure that everyone felt as comfortable as possible in a situation that sometimes just isn't frankly that comfortable. Well, your wedding was kind of the perfect comfort because it was outside. My favorite thing is to be outside. I love to eat outside. I love to hang outside. My wedding was outside. I just love an outdoors wedding. Yours was like cool. So it wasn't like I've been to outdoor weddings where I'm just drenched in sweat. Like one friend had a beautiful wedding in a... um a field, but it was in June in Georgia and I was just drenched. Um, so yours was like the perfect time of year, that crisp coolness of the fall. It was a little chilly. I do remember being a little chilly, but I would rather be chilly than hot any day of the week. Mm -hmm. Um, so mine was like Memorial Day weekend in Georgia, and it can go either way. Like right now, we're right almost at Memorial Day, and it's October freaking freezing. could have gone either way. That's true. It could have been ninety. That's true. I didn't know what was going to happen. That's true. Because like good. I had like um, cider out there. I had spike cider out there. I think I, we had coffee out there. Like I just like I needed I needed people to be comfortable. Also, I made y'all drive to Dahlonega. Yeah, it was a lovely drive in the fall though. <laughs> You're so nice. nice about it. <laughs> Look I at love, her wedding I love etiquette. a wedding. I love a wedding. I just love them. Okay, so back to the segment. <laughs> I just love weddings. I, and I'm to that age now where I'm just not getting invited to that many. So now I'm just starting to think about crashing them because I just love weddings. That could be a new era. Yeah. Wedding crasher, Nikki. All right, let's touch on some things that for me were just like, really? We have to tell people these things? Okay. But maybe we really do have to tell people these things. So first of all, don't announce a pregnancy or an engagement of your own at someone else's wedding. Oh, yeah. That counts as stealing their thunder. Sure. This is their day. Yeah. Let them have their day. Right. No, I. but I am going to disagree with you. I think that people are pretty selfish, so you probably need to get that out there. You need to share it. <laughs> well, maybe this next one, don't steal their photographer. 
Um, so I was reading that sometimes people hijack the wedding photographer to take their own family photos during the reception. Um, the wedding How? photographer is not like communal property. <laughs> like the couple paid these people a lot of money for them to capture their wedding memories. Why are people the not worst? your Christmas card picture? They like go in there and they're doing their pregnancy announcement picture. This is what I'm saying. So they're like getting their pictures taken. They're like, where are you? This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Or like they really are, you know, because I do understand like for older families, more established families, this might be the time to get their teenagers dressed up and looking nice and like taking a family picture, but that's not what the wedding photographers for don't yeah. do that bring your own photographer uh don't 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 actually that's also poor etiquette just they like put on christmas sweaters and they're like let's just get <laughs> so it taken care ridiculous. of although with that i'm like good multitasking it's good multitasking <laughs> it is and that's why i feel like if you can do it discreetly away from the couple feel free just don't use their photographer that's just tacky that's just tacky so weird okay um Third, don't post pictures of the wedding online before the couple does. So again, this goes along with that number one one about like not stealing their thunder. Let them do their thing on their own terms. Let How them dare announce you? it first. At every wedding, I'm gonna post a picture of me and Just Casey. My forever wedding date. <laughs> Hashtag forever wedding date. Uh and and on that note, don't take pictures during the ceremony. Apparently people do that. That's just tacky too. Mm. Uh, fourth, if the wedding reception introduces you to traditions or food you're not used to, don't remark loudly how weird that is. That's rude just at any event or a dinner or any social engagement, but like especially at a wedding. So the article I read where I pulled all these things from gave a specific um, example of someone from Cuba who incorporated Cuban traditions into their wedding. And then they had guests like rudely proclaiming how weird the food or the tradition was. How awful. That's so weird to me. And I would be so excited to try something new instead of these Melba toast weddings that there often are. Like, just right. something new and different. I, I mean, I had a Melba toast wedding too, so it's no shade. But, like, you know. Uh, the last one, I swear, we're an hour into this and I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, I'm going to reiterate the, import, the importance of RSVPing appropriately and showing up if you've said you're going to show up. There's just really is nothing worse than the couple having already paid for a meal for you and then you don't show up or that you bring someone else. Mm -hmm. So that one just needs to be repeated as many times as possible. RSVP and stick to your RSVP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we like a good wedding guest. Speaking of things we liked, Selena, what did you like in this episode? That was very nice. Um, I liked Suzanne's face in reaction to Julia's near strip tease during the reception. <laughs> It was like somewhere between I'm loving this, I'm going to get her later, but also like a little, like a tinge of admiration. Ah. Again, she has good face work. Yeah. How about you? Uh, like I said at the top, I thought this was just a fresh take on a shotgun wedding storyline. Uh, I liked the focus being on the new mother-in-law slash grandma-to-be struggle versus that like, hey, you're throwing your life away. I really liked that. And then just the whole idea of Julia having a one-night stand is glorious to me. It's just glorious. I've, yes. I have her walk of shame into the hallway and reaction to pain coming back into the room. All of that was just really <laughs> that was good. so funny. I like Suzanne fighting the house mother. Oh, yeah. Um, She's just some frumpy old lady. It's an epic smackdown. <laughs> Uh, and then Julia waltzing out with the bat at the end. There's a oh. runner in there we haven't talked about, but about car alarms. Yeah. And she just goes out there, like, whilst fighting off what must be a terrible hangover, because she's had it. We've yeah. heard three car alarms now over yeah, the course Yeah, she really does not enjoy a car alarm. That's right. Uh, that's all I had that I liked. You ready to move on to things you didn't like? Let's do it. So this is, I alluded to earlier, I was going to get around to this, but so I could maybe get on board with this idea that Payne wouldn't have been mortified by his mom running around and singing with the near, with the near strip tease at the, his wedding and hanging all over his friend or them hanging all over each other. Okay. Let's not put all that on Julia. But then he says, you're going to make one sexy grandma. Mm, yeah. What? That was weird. What? Yeah. What? Hold on. What? <laughs> I will tell you from just about every man I've ever known, okay, they don't even want to think about the word sexy in the same world as their mother. So yeah. I just didn't, that didn't, it was like someone who doesn't know someone with a mother wrote that line. Oh. Like, I just, like, yeah, it was just weird. Yeah, that was I cannot strange. see that happening. That's true. That's um, weird. Also, I just, this is not a did not like, but just one more stray that's what she's saying. 
yeah. to him? Yeah. Sweet Georgia Brown? I As a child? I Now I can't right off the top of my head remember the lyrics, but I do remember thinking, what a strange choice. I'm, I'm pretty sure Sweet Georgia Brown is supposed to be in reference to a prostitute. So, yeah. I, uh, like, I couldn't 100% confirm that, but that was what everything contextually was telling me. And so that's just, it's a little, it's a little strange. How about, how, how about you? I didn't have anything I didn't like, oh, but those are good so you ones. Have a five? That's a no, <laughs> no. Speaking of, jump on, jump right on into that rating. <laughs> so my rating scale is one night regrets. Mm-hmm. I'm giving it a four out of a five. So okay. I liked how they played Payne's wedding and Julia's reaction to it. Overall, it was a silly plot line. I liked it. I liked getting to see Julia's reaction to it all. Uh, I probably should have had at least one thing I didn't like. Let's go with the um, the. Pain calling his mom sexy. Um, it just was like silly. It was enjoyable. I liked watching it a couple of times. It wasn't top tier sort of stuff, but it was, it was a good solid run. I liked it. So I think your reaction is right. I'm going to steal that because I think that's okay. exactly it. It wasn't top tier, but it was fun. It was fun. And that's, yeah. the, that's the best summary. We've hit a little bit of a string of episodes like that lately. And it's hard because there was some, and, and this happens sometimes in this show. Like it's probably because they moved the, Episodes around. But there's some really <laughs> strong ones in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and so when we're doing something like this weird thing that we do where we're rating episodes of TV from 1990, right. it's hard to then not reflect on um, highs. We just know what a five out of a five on this show looks like. That's right. And this is not it. Mm-hmm. But like only because it can perform even better. Yeah. It's not as unenjoyable. Exactly. A four is good. There's been very few episodes of the show that I have just been like, nope. Yeah. Um, And and, and that's really, I think that's really saying something because we have to watch these episodes really closely. Yeah. Don't know what you don't know until you know it. And you know it. I gave it 3.8 out of 5 impromptu yet perfectly choreographed dance numbers. (laughs) I cannot say that again, (laughs) nor three times fast. Fine. I also just like seeing Julia um, lose her composure or do something that reminds her. Loose a little bit. That's right. Like, remind us she's human. Yeah. Because it's not always clear. 90s things? Uh, I didn't have anything. I have. Settle back. Um, I have a dance for you. Sweet Georgia Brown. Um, Star Search Junior. That's my audition. Uh, Or... Junior Star Search? I said American Idol 1.0. I think that's right. So it was a talent competition style TV show that ran from 1983 to 1995. I don't think I knew that it was on that long. Yeah, into the 90s. It was hosted by Ed McMahon, and it was kind of a precursor to, um, it was, I think it's more like America's Got Talent because it was... It was a talent mm-hmm. competition, not necessarily singing. That's right. So there were a couple categories specifically for juniors, and the show is credited with being a launch pad for several young performers. Um, I was just telling Kyle this the other day. He was like, that's a weird reference to have in 2023. Like, where did that come from? And I was like, well, I was researching for the podcast. That singer Tiffany, um, I think we're alone now, mm-hmm. Tiffany, was the first Star Search performer to land a number one hit after appearing on the competition. Uh, Leanne Rimes also made an appearance on the show, as did Adam Sandler, Alanis Morissette, Britney Spears, and Bill Ingvall, who we'll talk about in episode 21. Not necessarily all on Junior Star Search, but on the broader Star Search show. Okay. Yeah, I think Britney is probably the most famous. I really think all of, like, Britney, I'm pretty sure Justin Timberlake did. I think I I will link to this in the show notes. Um, Christina Aguilera, I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure, was on it. So, like, that entire generation of performers was on star search at one point in time yeah um i wasn't really an avid watcher but i did pop it on a few times maybe i don't know that i've ever watched it but maybe i did maybe my parents had it on i don't remember watching it but i definitely remember reading about it when i was learning about britney spears and justin timberlake and all those people right i feel like that's how it's more cemented in the culture now as being a vehicle for these big careers um so and now i'm sorry i can't remember i said spandex already but i think i interrupted you how dare you so but i think that definitely makes me feel like 90s um charlene's dress at the wedding like was a really big reminder for me that we're headed into that 90s fashion peter pan collar it's lace it was over like a dark velvet i'm like almost sure if it wasn't dark velvet it looked like it was dark velvet gosh darn it i should have opened up my middle school yearbook because i'm pretty sure my sixth grade 
picture, I am wearing a dress very much like that. Yes, I definitely had a dress that looked similar to that, which is like, why sometimes do we dress women like little girls on this show? Or why do we dress little girls like old women? Or like, yes, what is happening? I don't understand. Both ways, either way. Everyone why, get your why was that a look just in general, I think, is the problem we have here, that dress that it they were wearing. It feels like, you know, it's good because you can catch the food. <laughs> Like you a know, little bit of a bib. There's like some movement in it so you can dance around. I do I was, remember feeling beautiful in it. Yeah. Um, which is a funny thing to think about now. But I do well, remember feeling like I looked really beautiful. Like I just, I'm sure you were. Like I said, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And there's nothing like 35 years of time to be like, eh, was that the best decision? So. Not sure. The bride had a very oversized bow on, which I keep seeing again oh. in recent years. I love um, a bow. That also that also rings young to me because you see like little girls and big floppy bows. Yeah. Um it in Southern. Mm-hmm. So you were wasted. It's not like you heaved. Both of these <laughs> felt like very nineties things to say. Um, southern things? The only southern thing I had was Julia snapping green beans on the couch. Same. References we need to talk about. Um <laughs> So, well, you're whittling your list now. <laughs> no, well, I had Noriega all holed up in that embassy, yep. and I spent a really long time going yep. down a rabbit hole. And then I went back to the blog post and saw that you had already linked an article. Don't so you, you at also least just want to talk about the songs? Because I think the bottom line is yes, this is the thing that happened exactly what she said, which is oh like, yeah, he started. They started blasting rock music. They being the military um, were, were blasting uh, loud music at him at deafening volumes around the clock it happened for a really long time which because they couldn't enter the building That's because right. he had diplomatic immunity being in a an embassy location yes so they reverted to blasting the rock music right which i think so apparently i do want to just tack on real quickly because i think the music is actually the more interesting part of all of fantastic. this fantastic people are creative many people were not pleased with this musical approach i think it's better than like a, doing something you're not supposed to do, which is invading an embassy, or doing something violent. The president, what I read was that the president thought it was undignified. That's right. Um, I'm like, okay. Death is more dignified. Um, so some of these songs, do you have any of them written down? Uh, Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses. Wanted Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi. I just pulled a sticker, one of my children's stickers, off of the back of my shirt. This sounds I've right. just been walking around with that on. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle, Wanted Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi. The End by The Doors. They also rickrolled him playing Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. That was my Amazing. favorite. yeah. <laughs> Those are the ones I had. Okay. I, they also play Give It Up by Casey and the Sunshine Band. No Mr. Nice Guy by Alice Cooper. Paranoid by Black Sabbath. I mean, it was really... <laughs> Really kind of jammed, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> Panama by Van Halen. So they, um, some of these songs came about because they put a call out to troops to make requests. And so that's how some of these like um, wanted dead or alive sort of themed things came about. That's the part that made me laugh the hardest. I see. Danger Zone. Uh, Kenny yes. Hawkins. Yes. Um, sorry if I'm saying what you said. I tried to remember them all. Uh, Refugee. Did you say that one? Mm-hmm. By Tom Petty. And then I Fought the Law. And yep. That's a good one. I think that might have been the one right before they actually um, got him was I Fought the Law. When he oh, okay. One part that was a little misty to me. So it happened in December of 1989. He surrendered in early January. Mm-hmm. What I read was that they actually stopped the music pretty quickly because the president thought it was so undignified. Yeah. So right. it didn't seem like it lasted all that long. Right. He was holed up Might for a while. Might be some but. holes in the story since it was, because I think you were probably reading the same like retrospectives. I think I was. was. That's how it all came about as I was like, she's already looked into this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought I was just going to come in and blow your mind. I, I, I also had uh-huh. tear sheets. This comes up a couple of times. Yeah. Um, Suzanne said it after having breakfast with Tinka Ford. And then I was watching an episode this morning. And what I can't remember now, if it's one of the ones we're going to talk about today but tear sheets has come up a couple of times this season apparently this is like a one pager or a flyer that has a small picture of the item and other details like colors and price did you know what that was i had to look it up yeah yeah i think it's just a nice little example of small accurate interior design details that they work into the show 
Like, no, really, these are interior designers. I feel like this, sh- and this will come up um, in some future episodes, but there are some things that they're doing that I'm like, wow, the level of detail here is really impressive. It's like, like we can't get them off the sugar baker set and we don't give them enough money to make some of the sets look nice. So we are going to put every effort that we can into every small detail that they will actually give us money for. And I do think that that is something. So. Yeah. And we talked when we did the, um, the Annie pot segment, we talked about her, her sister in real life was an interior designer and how, uh, maybe that played into the show. I do wonder what that feedback loop looks like. Like if, um, Annie Potts really had a lot of input into the script. Right. Or if they really, I mean, a tear sheet is not like mind breaking stuff. I just didn't know what it was. Yeah. Could also be generational. Like maybe tear sheets aren't a thing anymore. I think they are. I think they're just digital now. Or mood or boards. Something like that. Yes. Actually, mm-hmm. that's what exactly what they said was mood boards. Okay. Um, Payne uses the phrase Terra Incognita. Did you know what that was? Uh, you tell me. It's a good cartographer's term for regions that haven't been mapped or documented. And he says, Terra incognita, mom, no women allowed. Mm. Anyways, I just didn't know what it was. So I looked it up. It felt like a military term to me. Yes, Mm. I think that's right. Uh, Well, I mean, uh, well, I guess it's a cartographer's term, but you know what? I bet you that there are some cartographers in the military. Or that the military took their term. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I also had sweet Georgia Brown, Only to say that it is kind of a Southern reference too. So it's composed in 1925 by Ben Burney and Maceo Pinkard with lyrics by Kenneth Casey. The name is connected to Georgia because apparently one of the guys who was involved in making it ran into a longtime member of the Georgia State House of Representatives, Dr. George Thaddeus Brown. That's such a 1900s name. Isn't it? Um, Who spoke of his daughter, Georgia Brown. And apparently when she was born, the Georgia General Assembly had issued a declaration that she was to be named Georgia after the state. And it's referenced directly in the song with Georgia claimed her, Georgia named her. And I just wanted to say that like, so they took that and they were like, cool, cool, cool. And then they made it about a sex worker. I was just sitting, if you saw that look on my face, our notes were reading almost exactly the same. And I was trying to square that with what you had said earlier about it being about a sex worker. And then I was trying to remember what I knew about it. Again, I want to say that I never directly, but it just like, it feels everything like it. about it. Some of Julia's movements during yeah. the dance, like yeah. all of that. Can I just share yeah. one thing with you too, that I was thinking no. about as a reference? No, you're done. So she gets Nancy Reagan's book is a gag. Oh, uh-huh. I don't want to talk about Nancy Reagan's book. Whatever. People can look that up. What I wanted to talk about was the idea of gag gifts. Like, why is that a thing? Wouldn't you just rather get someone a real gift? If you're going to spend money on something, make this it something they're going to like. What are they going to do with a gag gift? Okay. That's true. That's all. What did you have? I had one gifts? more reference. Danny Boy. That's what Charlene oh, yeah. said she was surprised Julia didn't sing. Uh, it's an English song that was written in 1913. The important part is my touchstone to the song is Schitt's Creek. Uh, when Moira Rose sings it at a funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently the song is about a mother sending her son off to war. So it's really sad. Yeah. Um, so I guess it gets played at funerals. I'm not sure why Charlene would have thought it would have been played at a wedding. But maybe because Julia's sad about losing her son. Maybe because who would Daddy sing their son, boy. Sweet Georgia Brown? Yeah. <laughs> There's so many. It's true. There's so many. It's true. All right. So next episode, season four, episode 20, Tornado Watch. We'd love everyone to follow along with us and engage. Instagram and Facebook at Sweet Tea and TV. TikTok at Sweet Tea TV Pod. YouTube at Sweet Tea TV 7371. <laughs> this is my first time reading that. Or just Sweet Tea. Just Sweet Tea and TV. TV yeah. <laughs> Our email address is Sweet Tea TV Pod at gmail.com. I should rehearse this more and maybe it would be a little more seamless. Oh, I like it. And our website is www.sweetttv.com. On that website, you can find our show notes where we put all of our references. You can also find other ways to support the show from the Support Us page. Come back Thursday. We're going to have an extra sugar about shotgun weddings. <laughs> Did that sound like a shotgun? Uh, it, like identical. <laughs> um, like I know what a shotgun sounds like. You know what that means. What does it mean, Selena? It means we'll see you around the bin.